Welcome to Prophecy in the News. I'm Kevin Clarkson, your host. Thank you for joining us today. We are in an exciting season. The fall is here of 2015. A lot of things are going on. Signs in the sky, uh, the Shemitah, uh, lots of things students of prophecy have been looking at with a real interesting gaze. Of course, our ultimate gaze is turned toward the sky. And our guest is Dan Goodwin. Hello. Kevin, good to be with you in Prophecy News again. We love this place. Well, brother, you have upgraded. I see you have uh, reissued God's Jubilee with a real fancy looking cover. And you are no longer Dan Goodwin. You are Daniel K. Goodwin. Daniel K. Goodwin. We do have a new cover and a, and a new edition coming out real soon. In fact, I think it's out now. But uh, it's got a few more chapters, it's got more pages and a new cover. And uh, excited about that. Well, we're here today. You've, you've come up, you and your friend Bill Waugh have uh, kind of updated an earlier work he's done, A Sevenfold Promise of His Soon Coming. Right, and that's a book that's, uh, that's only 126 pages. We printed this book in 2008. Pastor Bill Waugh is a good friend of mine. We, we, uh, we, we touched base on, on prophecy things for a lot of years, and we wrote this book together back in 2008. And uh, I've put it back out, but it's, it's not really the same book anymore. I've added several chapters. We edited some things, and it's now 126 pages. And f- what folks are saying is it's so compact. It's, uh, it's got some of the same things the Jubilee book has, only a little, little simpler, a little shorter. A little condensed and condensed. Uh, easier to get to. And, uh, and, of course, there's a few new chapters in there, too. But uh, folks are really saying that it's a, a, a good read, easy to read, and pretty exciting. Well, I, I want to get to some of the things you're covering in that. I do want to, you know, start with the scripture as our base. Uh, taking a famous passage out of Titus. <laughs> you are familiar with Titus 2. Paul said in verse 11, the grace of God. The wonderful grace of God that brings salvation to all men has appeared. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly. In this present world. And you know Dan. God gives us his grace. Not only to save us. But to help us show that salvation. With a godly life. Yes sir. But there's an end purpose. He says looking for that blessed hope. The glorious appearing. The glorious appearing of the great God. And our savior. Jesus Christ. And that's what we're pressing to. We're not looking really. uh, As much for signs. As we're looking for the son. That's right. Jesus is coming back folks. And uh, we can know that we are living near that time. He said to be watching always, but we've seen uh, a real gathering of things. And so let me just ask you, um, why the title, A Sevenfold Promise? A Sevenfold Promise of a Soon Coming. That's, that's the title. And I uh, thought a lot about that and when, when we wrote it. And, and I like the title. It's a little long, but uh, I guess we wrote it that way and gave it that title because of the sevens in the Bible. I mean, all the way back to Genesis 1, seven days of creation. Yeah. There's the seven feasts. They take place in seven months. The world's going to be 7,000 years, I believe. Uh-huh. And uh, seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets. It's God's number, no doubt about that. So a sevenfold promise. He's promised that he's coming. You just read a promise. The blessed hope of his, of his glorious appearing. And his, uh, it, it's a promise. And, uh, and, of course, the sevenfold promise meaning that promises are multiple throughout the Bible and everywhere you look in the Bible there's something about Christ returning so that's 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 why we gave it the title a sevenfold promise of a soon coming amen well you know in light of eternity our time on this earth is so brief and being with him is going to go on and roll through the ages so we really ought to live every day in light of his return we better yes we better well you have uh, also got a book called God's final jubilee we've already alluded to that but uh it's become a pretty good bestseller on uh, Amazon. Uh, now, why'd you write this book? Uh, like I said, we wrote it in 2008, and we reprinted it be- because I think because uh, it's smaller, and a lot of people don't read. The, the, the Jubilee book now has over 250 pages. And, uh, you know, to some readers, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a chore. And now for you and I, you know, we, you know, we read stuff like that, but a lot of people don't read bigger books. Yeah. And so folks were telling me, you know, they said, why don't you put that other book back out? I said, well, a lot of that's in the Jubilee book. And they, they said, yeah, but it's such a nice little book. And uh, so I got thinking about it. I said, you know what? I, I think I should put it out. So I rewrote some things. There are some things in the book that are not in the Jubilee book. So uh, there's some things in that book uh, that you'll get that's not in my other books. But it's such a compact, simple little book. 
some folks told me in a couple of hours they've thumbed through that thing and, 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 and read it. So 126 pages, you can read it pretty fast. It's compact. And uh, something that's cheaper, you can, you can give it away, give it to friends. Yeah, it might be good for somebody that's just beginning to right. explore this topic. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, you have one chapter in here on the pre-tribulation rapture. And we at Prophecy in the News uh, unapologetically believe Christ is coming before the tribulation right. begins. Uh, could you just give us maybe one of your reasons right. for holding that position? You know, and I tell people this, I joke about it, but I, I tell people everybody will be pre-trib at the rapture. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. When the rapture happens, if you're post-trib, mid-trib, it doesn't matter, no trib, pan-trib, everyone will be pre-trib at the rapture because there's no doubt, absolutely no doubt that the Lord is coming before Daniel's 70th week. I mean, Daniel's 70th week is Old Testament. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, upon the holy city. That's got nothing to do with it. We're not even there when Daniel's written. And uh, the tribulation period is for them. We can't, we can't be here for that. But let me give your, your listeners just one little tidbit here yeah. that's in the book. Revelation 4, verse 1, I believe with all my soul, is the rapture. For instance, Revelation 1 is a little introduction of the book of Revelation. Gives us, it shows Christ and his relationship to the church. Then you turn the page, Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation 3 is the seven churches. Right. And those seven churches are literal, but they're also prophetic of, I believe, the entire 2,000-year church age. You get to that last church, the Laodicean church. You read through that in the terrible condition of that church, which, by the way, is us. The church today, the church today. fits that Laodicean yes. age. So here we are at the end of that last church age, and you get to the end of chapter 3, you turn the page, and you come to chapter 4, and look what it says, after this. You know, you don't have to be a, 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 a grammar or an English major in college to understand what that means. After this means after what? I took my Bible, and I took a pen, I, wrote an, I drew an arrow in there up to verse, uh, verse 22 of the preceding chapter, chapter 3. After this means after the last chapter. What's the last chapter? The church age. So when he says after this, he's talking about after the church age. After the church age. And look what it says. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. What else can that be? A door is opened in heaven. It's, it's heaven opening up to receive something. And look what it says. It goes on, it goes on to say, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet. Oh, well, my goodness, the trump of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's the rapture. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. Talking no. with me, which, uh, which said, come up hither. Well, doesn't Thessalonians say we shall be caught up? Come up hither. So everything in this verse is pointing to the fact that this, this is the rapture. So Revelation 4 is the rapture. When does it take place? After this. After, after the church age. Uh, the rapture happened. Then you read on and you see uh, that John sees a throne and him that sat on it. And then you get to chapter 5. He has in his book uh, a, a seven-sealed scroll in his hand. And John begins to weep. Who's, who's worthy to open the book, they said. No man was found worthy, neither in heaven nor under the heaven, to open that book. Suddenly in the midst of the four and twenty elders, there stood as it were a Amen. lamb as it had been slain. Amen. And it goes on. It says the lion of the tribe of Judah. He goes up to the throne, takes the book out of the right hand of he that sitteth on the throne, which is God the Father. And he opens the first seal. Now you turn the page again. Revelation 6, he opens the first seal. By the way, that's Jesus. Jesus opens the first seal. In fact, he opens all these seals. Yes, he does. It is Jesus Christ who orchestrates the tribulation period. These terrible things that are going to happen, he's, he's orchestrating it. And he opens the first seal, and the tribulation begins. Where's the saints? We're up there. That's right. Where, when did we go up? After this, after the church age. So that's just, just one thing. It's in, it's in the book. And there's more reasons, I'm sure. I think there's nine or ten reasons why we're pre-trib. And uh, to, well. me, to me and to you, these are simple things. But I realize there's a lot of people that struggle with this. So I think the book is written on a, on a level that any, it has to be on a level that anyone can understand. Because I'm not a smart guy. Uh, it's written on a level that a guy from Maine like me can understand. Well, you, you said something earlier that I, I kind of find amusing when you said uh, by then everybody will know that we're pre-tribulation rapture. Right. And, you know, I'm a preacher, so indulge me. And you are, too. Um, a quick story. Um, the great Dr. W.A. Criswell at First Baptist mm -hmm. Church of Dallas, you know, he went there in his 30s and uh, pastored for over 50 years. And he was a, uh, you know, pre-tribulation. Uh, he was premillennial in, in all of his positions. And so 
Uh, he, he actually took the church through the book of Revelation on a series of messages. But once he was in a deacon meeting and they were <laughs> talking about some things and I don't know how it got off on theology. But one of the uh, his esteemed predecessor was the great George W. Truett, who was a wow. truly great yeah. order and some called the pastor of America during World War Two. Uh, but Truett had been a, a post millennialist. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, uh, of course, he had died and gone on to glory. And so one of the deacons, when Chriswell got into the theology and mentioned premillennialism, one of that one of the men said, but pastor, don't you realize our former pastor was post millennial? He wasn't premillennial and. Chris well didn't miss a beat. He just grinned and said, "He is now." He is now. I knew where you were headed. With that. <laughs> he is now. That's a true story. Right. And we all will be. I we mean, all the will be when when we'll see. Uh, you know, we won't see through a glass darkly. We'll see face to and face. And I tell people at that this moment. I tell people this when when the rapture. And I, of course, I joke about it. But look, you. I t don't take life so seriously. You're not going to get out of it alive anyway, right? Right. So I joke a little bit. I say, you know, at the rapture, we're all going to get to heaven. We're going to be standing. We're going to look at our, our, our watches or our calendars, and uh, and we're all going to, our mouth's going to drop over. Of course this was the rapture. Why didn't we see it? This is the perfect day for the rapture, and it will be. Amen. It's going to be the perfect day. God has this all set. It's going to be perfect. Yeah. Amen. Well, uh, l let's let's talk about your uh, book, A Sevenfold Promise of His Soon Coming, and uh, by the way, it's a good time to mention if you're interested in obtaining this, which we're discussing and some of the contents, uh, this is available. You can go to the uh, web, the number on your screen or our website, prophecyinthenews.com, and uh, it's available to you there. The cost is $13.95 and shipping and handling, but that's a great little thing to put in people's hands. And you even touch on some of the things that are right upon us this fall. In fact, days away. Apocalyptic events. I can't say it. I, that's the chapter, and I can't even say it. Apocalyptic. Yeah. I can't say it. It's tough. Apocalyptic. So that's <laughs> the only thing in the book that you, uh, you simple folks might struggle with. P simple folks like me. Apocalyptic. There you go. Well, what are some of the things that uh, you know you're anticipating and talking about? Anticipating, and of course, here we are on the edge of it. I we mean, are. I mean, we're days away. Uh, weeks away from some days away from others i've got a list here and if, if the listeners or viewers will bid me a little kindness here I'm, i'll read some of these because okay. okay. i'm not going to try to say these off the cuff but let me read some of the amazing things that are coming in just days from now all pointing to the fact that something is getting ready to happen and that something could be the lord coming now, we're not date setters. Prophecy News has never been a date setter. Uh, very foolish to try to say this is when the Lord's right, coming. Right. But you know what? We're all human, and we all see what's coming. And I believe the Lord's coming soon. I'm not sure. I don't think we're going to pin this down to a day or an hour. But uh, let, me, uh, let me read a few things. Starting, now, some of these are in the past. September 1st well, marked the beginning of FEMA's annual National Preparedness Month. That was September 1st. Ah, prepared for uh, what? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, good question. What, what is that about? Now, that's past. That was a few days yeah. ago, a few week ago, a week and a half. Uh, Talk about a federal emergency. Yeah, we, we've, we've got federal <laughs> emergency. Now, now we're talking, uh, now here's today. So today, September 11th, is the 14th anniversary of, guess what, 9-11. 9-11, 7 plus 7. For, uh, here we are, the, the, uh, the 14th anniversary or two Shemitah cycles of, uh, of that. Of and the, the and some are concerned there may be, uh, you know, terrorist uh, attack that, in right. conjunction with and that. And the stock market crashes and all right. that stuff. And uh, it's also the last day of trading on Wall Street before the end of the Shemitah year. And depending on when your viewers are listening to this program, the stock market may have already closed today. Uh, September 12th. Now, this is this is strange, and I'm not a fan of this person, but let me read this. Madonna. Uh, <laughs> okay. Madonna, uh, her rebel great heart. Great theologian. Yeah, eh? great, 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 uh, great example for our young ladies and a great role model. Madonna's rebel heart tour opens in the United States on September 12th. Rebel heart. Yeah, now that's a good name for a, for a tour. Uh, that's a good example for our kids, right? Right. The first stop is in Washington, D.C. That's a good place for her. And, and according to a so-and-so, I won't try to read this name, but the opening theme of her concert is this, the desecration of the bride and the arrival of fallen angels. Isn't that strange? That's I mean, it's almost crazy. prophetic. And uh, all right, all, let's you move on. You say that's prophetic or pathetic? <laughs> it's, it's, yes. Both. Yes. <laughs> um, all right, September 12th and 13th. Um, 
uh, this a rabbi, and I won't try to read his name because I'd butcher it, a, a leading rabbi, an authority in Orthodox Judaism, has indicated that the Messiah that the Jewish people are expecting could come at this time. He's talking about this fall, this month. Now, I'm not saying that's true. I'm saying that's, that's something that's out there this, this, this September. And September 13th, just a couple days from now, is the last day of the Shemitah year. And those that have read the Harbinger and whatnot understand the sabbatical cycle. Every seven years, a sabbatical cycle. Right. And the last two, uh, stock market crashed and crashed bad. And uh, that day is coming up, and that's a Sunday, September 13th, the last day of the Shemitah cycle. And uh, that's interesting. September 13th also is a partial solar eclipse. And, uh, um, and, and then September 14th, Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets, like we just read in, uh, in our passage here, Revelation 4.1, about a, a trumpet. Uh, a lot of people believe Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, is a prophetic type of the rapture. And it's the, it's the next feast on the calendar that we're waiting. And that's, that's, that's coming up. Indeed. All right. Also on September 14th, first day of trading on Wall Street after the end of the Shemitah year, which is, you know, Monday. And, is, you know, is anything big going to happen there? We don't know. September 15th. Now, here's one that I just learned recently. This is interesting. September 15th, the 70th session of the United Nations General Assembly begins. It's the 70th year, 70th session of the U.S. I didn't know that. Uh, it just happens to be this fall, September 15th, like everything else. Everything's jumping on us in this month. It's, it's amazing. You'd almost think something's getting ready to happen. And uh, Well, there so, are some visits in, uh, yep, in well, line with and, that. And we're coming along with that here in a second. It's been widely reported. And listen to this. The 70th General Assembly begins. And it's been reported that France plans to introduce a resolution to give formal recognition to the Palestinian state. By the way, the Pope's already done it. Pope's already acknowledged or said that uh, that they're a state. He acknowledged them. The it's 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 rumored that France is going to put a resolution out in this assembly to formally acknowledge to formally it. acknowledge that they are a Palestinian and state. And I can tell you how the numerous Arab states will vote on that. Resolution. Oh yes. Uh, now for years, it all, you know the United States would be the veto vote, and uh, but. Do you that's see that happening now? Yeah, now. That, 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 that's not going to happen. Our, our president's got no love for Israel or, or for these guys. Uh, so that's interesting. All right, September 15th, Jade Helm ends. Now, Jade Helm, we don't have time to go in with all, but I'm sure your viewers probably understand that July 15th to September 15th, military, Jade Helm, military exercises. exercise, six or seven states. Here in the U.S. They're yoked up with, with police forces, and they're doing drills and uh, uh, and all that. A lot of, I got a lot of questions about it, but I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know. Uh, but that ends on that day. But you know what? Unless, unless they're needed for something, you know. You realize that they're in place. The military is in place in our country should martial law be declared or yes. some disaster. Um, so, all right, September 17th, the deadline for Congress to vote on Obama's be, uh, deal with Iran. That's that TPP thing they call it, or I think it's TTP or TPP. I think it's TPP, whatever that means. But anyway, the trade thing, the, uh, the, the peace agreement with Iran, yeah. the deadline for Congress to vote or agree with that or, or whatever they want to call it is coming right up September 17th. So um, that's interesting. Something else, um, the pilgrimage to Mecca is taking place September 21st. Mm. So now we're moving up the calendar a little bit. What a uh, jam-packed uh, itinerary here. Yeah, I mean, the, the pilgrimage to Mecca. Of course, that, you know, for your viewers that don't know, that's the most holy site yeah. of the uh, of the uh, the Arabs and the uh, the Muslims. And a lot of people think the Dome of the Rock is. That's the, I, th I believe that's the third I believe holy you're right. site. Mecca is number one. That's where the, the black stone and, and all Medina, that stuff. And Medina, and Jerusalem. Yep. yep. So, uh, all right, it's also September 21st, get this, the United, United, Nation, in, United Nations International Day of Peace. International Day. Where's all this ah. peace they're talking about anyway? But, you know, there's peace coming, right, with the Antichrist. Yeah, a false peace. Yeah, so it just happens to be an interesting day there. September 23rd, Yom Kippur. Everybody funds with me because I'll yeah. say Yom Kippur. No, Brother Goodman, it's Yom Kippur. Well, look, I'm, I'm a white boy. I'm, a, I'm from Maine. You're lucky you can understand me at all. But uh, Yom Kippur, I think is how they say it, uh -huh. uh, the Day of Atonement. That's the sixth feast on the biblical calendar. That's September 23rd. By the way, Pope Francis arrives in the White House September 23rd. 
And, uh, and he's, he's to meet with President Barack Obama. On that day, on Yom Kippur. I hope, you visit, I hope your viewers are getting this. The, 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 the Pope, Pope Francis, on the, on the Day of Atonement, the most holy uh -huh. day in Israel, I believe the day Christ comes back on the white horse to take back Jerusalem with the title deed in his hand, a jubilee, Pope Francis will be in the White House with the president. And uh, we might not be here. I don't know. We might be up there. But anyway, mm. uh, by the way, let's say go a little further with this. Um, that day happens to be exactly 49 biblical years. Now, a biblical year is 360 days. That's, right. that's the biblical year that God uses. It is exactly 49 biblical years from the Day of Atonement, September 23rd, where the Pope's at the White House, back to June 7th, 1967. I was telling you about this earlier. Yeah. June 7th, that's the day. You can see black and white footage of it. The Six-Day War where Israel right. took back Jerusalem. You can see the soldiers. You can see them crying. You see the, the old men at the Wailing Wall weeping. For the first time in 2,500 years, they got Jerusalem back. The most sacred Spot. And there they are. In fact, Leviticus 25 says that the Jubilee, when, when, you, when you enter the land, you begin counting 49 years, and then you have a, on the Day of Atonement, it's the Jubilee. It is a perfect, Brother Kevin, a perfect 49-year Jubilee, right down to the beginning where they enter the land, to the end where it's the Day of Atonement. And is this just coincidence? <laughs> it's a perfect Jubilee. Uh. But there's more. The the Pope, Pope Francis, is the 266th Pope. I know in the book we talk about him being the 113th Pope. He's the 113th from Malak, Malachi, whatever his name is. Uh, you know, the guy, we, when you the say... Prophecies. The prophecies. Right, the prophecies of, of Malachi or Malachi. We, uh, you've heard the term, you're full of malarkey, right? That's where that comes from. <clears throat> they, this guy had some prophecies and people didn't take him seriously. And... Uh, so Pope Francis is the 113th Pope from him. But if you go all the way back to the first Pope, they say that this is the 266th Pope. Now listen to this. The 266th Pope, Pope Francis, will be at the White House with the president on the 266th day wow. on our calendar. Okay. And some, have, some believe that there's something going to be born this day, like a new world order or something. Yeah, because 266 days is how long it takes from conception to the full development of a baby in a mother's womb. A pregnancy, a normal pregnancy is 266 days. And then birth comes. See the correlation here. Uh, the Pope uh, is there. He's the 266 Pope. He's there on the 266th day. He's there for a reason. He's there to promote world peace and possibly a world mm -hmm. government. And there's a couple other things here. We'll pro Let me just give you one more. On May 14th, 2014, French foreign minister, and I won't try to read his name on the air either. It's, it's a tough one, Fabius or something like that. Uh, I've seen the video of this. This, this. this is true. May 14th, 2014, French foreign minister Laurent Fabius famously proclaimed that there was 500 days from now to a climate chaos, cli a, a, clim uh, a climate problem. And uh, uh, that 500 days ends September 25th. Now, isn't that strange? Which is the day, same day the Pope goes to the United Nations and speaks at the United Nations. September 23rd, he's at the White House. September 24th, he's with the joint session of Congress. He speaks to them. September 25th, he meets at the United Nations to offer up more one world government things and whatnot. It's the 500th day that this French guy was talking about on May 14th, 2014. Isn't that strange? And uh, nobody understood what he meant there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he was supposed to say it. <laughs> I think he probably got in trouble, but he, oh but he made that statement. 500 days. We got 500 days to do something. What did he mean? It just happens to be this, this fall. So that's just an overview, Brother Kevin. You folks can take or leave what they, <clears> what they <throat> want from this. I mean, but these are real things. And is this all, well, is this all one great big coincidence? <laughs> and the fourth blood moon is, of course, right. the 28th. The 28th, the final blood and, moon. Thanks uh, for getting that's on the next page well, as here. We've been reminded that blood moon is going to be a super moon. A super moon. Close, invisible in Jerusalem. And the, the, only, the only one of the four that's that if you live in Jerusalem, Jerusalem you'll, you'll actually see it. See it. That, and it'll be very close to the earth. And a super moon. Like in your face. Yeah. My goodness, well. 
Is that all you got? <laughs> you got another hour? That's a that's a that's quite a month. Uh, that's that's a lot compressed into no, that's, 15 that's days. That's the next two weeks. I mean, yes. your listeners, your viewers need to realize we're not telling you the Lord's coming next week or next month or today or tomorrow, but He could. And this stuff means something's coming upon this nation. There's sure something's a coming upon the world. Rapid coalescing of events. Yep. And uh, it causes you to think and wonder. If we're not standing on the very edge. And I believe, I believe we're at the end of all things. I really do. Whether it's this fall, whether it's this month or not, I believe that we are the last generation on this earth. Well, the end of all things is at hand, the Bible says. And, mm-hmm. and let's, let's just take that for a moment. First of all, if we know the Lord, Jesus said, lift up your heads, your redemption draws nigh. We're not to be running around in fear or panic. In fact, if we know the Lord, this is the blessed hope and glorious appearing. We ought to be looking up. We ought to be excited. We ought to be, oh, man, the bridegroom is coming for the bride. What an anticipation of a wedding day. Mm -hmm. That's a great time, not a fearful thing, unless you're in some kind of forced marriage you don't want to be in. And that's not the case if you know Christ. But if you don't know the Lord, yeah, you ought to be terrified. I hate to tell you that, but... uh, God's getting ready to, to declare war on this planet. And uh, just like the ambassadors are all called home when a nation declares war on another nation and they pull the ambassadors out, we are Christ's ambassadors. He's going to pull us out. We sure are. But those that are left here, you're going to meet the judgment of God. You're going to see the turning loose of demons and hell on earth. And you need to be ready. If you don't know Christ, call on his name believe in him that he died for your sins and Mm -hmm. rose again because he loves you and he'll save you and let's keep looking up well friend i want to just invite you to be a part of our magazine family prophecy in the news has done a magazine for a number of years we have thousands of subscribers across uh, the nation and some other parts parts of the world this is available a year subscription is 34.95 and the reason it's at that price is there is always uh, a special bonus offer And you can go to our website to see what the current one is. Uh, Call the 800 number on your screen and get the information over the phone. But by paying that, you get 12 editions mailed to your home, plus you get the special bonus offers. If you only want the magazine in an electronic format and no special offer, it's $24.95 a year. But we would love for you to be part of our family. The magazine always has very timely articles. These are by some guests and authors uh, that are a part of us i always have an article we have feature articles from the archives of jr church and outstanding articles by bob carnuke on archaeology hope you'll join our magazine family